punch, you'll be able to unlock a new playable character for your squad, the Joker. At least buy me dinner first. <laughs> He was part of this, which already shows that he's slightly more cooperative than the previous Joker we've had. But as you get used to him and actually play to him, you realize he's unhinged in a different way. Not only has he got to figure him up, oh, making new friends after a move is always tough. He can blast himself into the air and then uses that to glide around, and then he can actually flip that down to grind along buildings, knocking enemies out of the way. And the kind of frantic, vertical and horizontal energy that he has means you've always got to be moving and always attacking the enemies. Over time, we can build up a library of characters that DC fans might not have expected to see in a video game, like a regular comic book release. I look forward to when the next issue's coming out. And in the same way, I hope people will look forward to the next episode from us. Whatever it is, I'm down. New environments, new characters, missions, challenges, gear, and more. All of this free content comes for players who own the game. We can't wait for you to see what the future holds. With Elseworlds, the possibilities are endless. How do you like that? Thanks for watching this series. We hope you'll join us for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, a third-person action shooter where some of the wildest villains of DC Comics join forces to save the world from its greatest heroes. <laughs> no, no, that's mental. We're not doing that. God help us. <laughs> yeah. I think players are going to be surprised about the depth to which they can craft the character. It comes back to player choice and player freedom. Everything from melee strikes into gunplay, which you could then go into a traversal attack. All of the combat moves flow seamlessly into another. The squad can be garish, they can be loud, and playing together with your friends in a multiplayer space is a really unique experience that you can't get anywhere else. What we've done with the Suicide Squad is to really expand those experiences. Not only just one character this time around, we've done it with four and we plan to do it with more. Well, this brings back memories of my old Suicide Squad. Welcome to Task Force X. From the onset, Suicide Squad that we wanted to make. You get to play with friends, you get to play on your own, but while you are playing on your own, you're playing with the squad. With multiplayer, we're leaning into the competition within the squad to show off your skills, show off your medal, be the best one. <laughs> I'm a freaking superstar. The squad are working together under duress. And so it's fun to add in your hot shit on tight for your cold final bread. <laughs> did you see that? Tell me you did. I was like, how do you like that? Hey, son. and use the equipment that other players have equipped on their characters in your squad with the AI playing as the characters. And those rewards for you using those bots. And that's a really fun feature that I think the players will be incentivized because they'll get something out of it too. Farewell. We also have the, oh yeah, by the way, I beat you. Home run, baby. You boot up the game, you're logging in, and then all of a sudden on your screen, you get Boomerang giving you the finger. I think fans are going to have a great time with our remote system. Allowing players to kind of communicate in different ways, really in playful ways. As Rocksteady, as creators, this was another opportunity for us to really engage with our characters, extend the narrative through the players' choices with a very cinematic eye. Through the game, we offer many customization options and outfits to the player. You start off in the prison, you get your prison garbs, and then you evolve to the Task Force X outfits. Yeah, right. I was thinking something more fashion forward. The outfit customization in our game is uh, vast, to say the least. With this game, Rocksteady will deliver a full story-driven campaign to players, including more cinematics than any previous Arkham game. For players who survived the war against Brainiac's forces and want to keep the adventure going, Rocksteady is ready.
We very much knew we had a story to tell initially, and then we wanted to carry on uh, feeding into that, and then changing up the gameplay to have a game that was going to evolve through post-launch content. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is going to be one of the most generous, player-friendly, post-launch experiences available. Every season we will have two episodes. Each season there's going to be a different spin on how you play, and will be heavily themed by a DC villain. So there's many, many layers of influence from the DC world on how you play and what you do. The seasonal content gets automatically dropped into the game each episode. There's no playable content locked behind a battle pass, and the in-game shop is for cosmetics only. You'll always be able to go back and play the episodic content. If you want to come back six months from now, that'll always be there. This is a totally player-friendly approach to letting you play the content you want to play when you want. The DC universe is massive, and in most games, you can only see or explore a tiny, tiny piece of it. But what's really cool about the narrative of Kill the Justice League is there's almost no limit on where we can go. Celebrating before the game is over. <laughs> In his pursuit of trying to recreate his perfect Kolu, Brignac has been experimenting with some of our favorite DC characters' DNA, creating new worlds in alternate realities. It's these worlds that we call Elseworlds. Brignac is a genius of 12th level intelligence, uh, but he's also trying to rebuild this civilization that he misses and is lost, and there is nothing he won't do to get there. New Kolu will be reborn. He's building a model of the multiverse. It's all gathering data. I will unlock your full potential to serve me. There's different versions of everybody in different universes, and their timelines have just diverged at some point. We've got lots of amazing characters coming up in seasonal play that I'm really excited for players to meet. And the Elseworld Principles gives us lots of flexibility and lots of room to put our own spin on them. So we get to play with a bunch of cool shit from alternate universes, and then what? Retire? When season one launches this month,